Let's get straight into a look at Sabania Gold. High heeled assets. Are we looking at a well bred dog in your books? Boy, this was the darling of the universe for about 25 years. Driefontein, Kluf, and even Beatrix. All three of those were such stars from their inception right up until probably three, four years ago. So I, I find it hard to believe that this great shining asset is now being referred to as dogs. I, I think I've been as much for this unbundling these assets as anybody I've talked to. So I, I'm really glad Neil's at the helm and now's the chance to show the world that there's still another 5, 10, 20 years left in those assets. But as Neil pointed out, everybody's got to work together. You need a good manager like Neil Frahneman, but if the rest of the team, and that means 15, 20,000 people, if they don't all work together, then they, they can turn this thing into a dog. But the, these are decent assets. They're good assets. They're certainly not dogs. Peter, talking about dogs, you and I are a couple of old dogs. Alicia may be prettier than us, but she doesn't have our, our experience. If you go back to the old days, she won't remember that you could trade about 30 stocks at one stage on the JSC uh, Gold Board. You could have Cal Gold, you could have ERPM, Val Reefs, whatever you wanted. And you had choice then. And then everyone got together and bolted them all together and decided to make Anglo Gold Ashanti and Goldfields and Harmony, etc. And it all became a little bit sort of anemic in, uh, from my point of view. Now it's all sort of come full circle and they're splitting them up again. Whether it's going to yield um, dividends for investors and profits for investors, I don't know, but it certainly gives us the choice. Well, exactly. It, as you said, we had 65 gold stocks when I started in this business in 1989. 65 listed shares. And you could choose exactly what you wanted. And the, the stocks that we called dogs back then were ERPM, Durban Deep, Stillfontaine. And boy, when we talked about closing those mines down, we were scalded alive in boiling water by the Europeans and the Americans. They, they were 70, 80% shareholders in those stocks. Mm -hmm. Now, Driefontein, Kluf, Beatrix are nowhere near what ERPM, Durban Deep, and Stillfontein. But just look at the age of ERPM, Durban Deep. Those mines were literally 100 years old. So Beatrix, Dries, and Kluf's aren't nearly that old, and they are much richer. Uh, than those mines were towards the end of their life. Mm -hmm. So it's just about, it's about, this is a Rubik's Cube. If you can get the combination right, you're going to win all kinds of jackpots and prizes. This company now has virtually no debt and it's got huge cash flow and it's only, its market cap is maybe 10, 11 billion. If you'd have looked at these assets 10 years ago, it would have been three times that. Mm -hmm. and, and all gold shares now are trading at their lowest yield in probably 30 years. So it's a great time to be doing this unbundling. I think it's, it's a good time to be buying this share. Of course, as uh, Lindsay highlighted, I wasn't part of that history, but certainly part of the history being written today and part of the future moving forward. I mean, if we're looking at uh, the kind of debut Sabanya Gold's put on the table today, I've been reading through the commentary that's coming through, many saying it's uh, hardly uh, likely to inspire any other of the major South African gold producers to actually go down this route. The lights off and Anglo Gold Ashanti. Your view there? Look, we're going to have to wait and see. The, the fact that we had a very small reaction today mm -hmm. shows that the market had pretty finely discounted what was likely to happen. Um, I think it's too new. Nobody has a clue how this mine is going to produce. Is it going to pay a 5, 6, 7 percent dividend yield? Or are management going to come to us in 6 months and 12 months and say, guys, we've got the money to pay the dividend. But gee, if you let us put that money into deepening the shaft or reopening these levels, we can access another 5 million ounces. And you know, then our net asset value is going to go up much more. So this is going to be about talking to your shareholders and, and getting an idea of what they want. But I've seen some of these analyst reports that think this share is going to be under pressure now because the foreigners are going to dump it. I don't believe that. I think for every foreigner who's going to dump this stock, there's going to be two or three who are going to want it because this looks like the original South African gold shares that everybody loved for more than 30 years because they paid serious dividends and they had enough reserves to give them a very long life. Mm -hmm. Peter, the, um, you're very knowledgeable when it comes to engineering and the way a mine is run and the way a mining company is run. 
the one thing I do like about this, apart from the choice aspect, which I alluded to earlier on, is the fact that you've got international now and mechanized and you've got the South African assets of which you've been talking about. And there's almost as though Neil Froneman will be able to focus and, and, and give us a peculiarly South African local focus to his operations and the rest of the company, which is listed separately, will do their own thing because an international operation and a South African operation are two different animals and require different strategies. Very much. I, I agree 100%. So if you're not going to take the job, I think Lindsay <laughs> can definitely get a job with Sabanya. But, but he's right. Can you imagine trying to manage different strategies in all these different countries? And, and how do you incorporate your technology division? And everybody mechanizes as fast and able as they can. You mechanize when it's going to increase profits and save lives. Mm -hmm. Not when it's arguable, does it save any lives? And does it have your profits or drive you into ruin? Um, what was the other point I wanted to make? Um, just looking at you know mechanization down the road I mean is this a, a, an avenue that uh, I mean Neil highlighted it's not an avenue that they can pursue uh, very aggressively because at the end of the day what you are looking at is a mature mind look we can mechanize all over the place mechanize might mean you're using a, a small radio transmitter instead of using a telephone cable underground it might mean you've got a super efficient different kind of water pump that uses half the electricity as the big pumps they've got pumping water out. Yeah. It might mean you've got a train that drives 20 k's an hour instead of 10 k's an hour. So now you've doubled the productivity of that train or you've got a hydraulic drill that runs off electricity like Neil Froneman's implemented at Gold One's uh, Modderfontein. Go down there and watch two drillers do the work of six drillers. Yeah. And, and pumping air underground to use it as power isn't even a quarter as efficient as using electricity to drive. So th that's, that's mechanization too. It's not just putting a giant loader in a small place and caving the mine in.